Democratic Congressman Kurt Schrader happens to be one of the neoliberal corrupted Democratic politicians who actually has fought aggressively to keep the cost of pharmaceutical drugs high. But he's campaigning for reelection, so he has decided to lie to his constituents about his record on this issue. Let's take a look. Loud and quiet, small and well, some bigger. I'm Kurt Schrader. I've been a farmer and veterinarian for 40 years, caring for all our four-footed friends. In Congress, I'm making a real difference for their owners, too. Taking on drug companies to lower insulin costs, making sure Medicare can negotiate lower drug prices. Expanding Pell Grants and career and technical education. And I'm leading the fight to get big money out of politics. I'm Kurt Schrader, and I approve this message to get even more done for Oregon. Isn't it so interesting how there are some regulations in place against false advertising, but it doesn't apply to politicians and political ads? They could lie to you about anything, just like Schrader did in that ad. Because again, he is certainly one of the Democratic lawmakers who fought tooth and nail to defeat the provision in the Build Back Better agenda that would have allowed for Medicare to negotiate for lower drug prices. And I'll tell you the history of all of that in just a moment. But Cenk, you wanna react? Yeah, uh, look, that is uh, deceptive political advertising 101. Nicely done by Schrader. He's one of the most conservative Democrats in Congress. Uh, and ironically, that ad was paid for by drug company money. Uh, while he said that he's fighting against drug companies and wants to get big money out of politics. In reality, he took the big money from drug companies and ran that ad with it. And then uh, surrounded himself with cute animals too. Oh, Jake, but he likes dogs. Isn't he a good guy? He likes dogs. Yeah. There was a corgi. There's a corgi in that ad. I mean, it's like ridiculous emotional manipulation. But more importantly, he's a liar. He's a liar. So let's get into what his record actually indicates. So again, he played a key role in watering down the Democrats' efforts, I should say progressives' efforts, to rein in prescription drug prices. Schrader maintains that by voting for the Build Back Better Act, which contained provisions empowering Medicare to negotiate lower prescription drug prices, his credentials on the matter remain above reproach. But Schrader's campaign does not mention that he would not have supported the drug price provisions if House leaders had not granted his wish to grant Medicare weaker negotiating power than the bill originally contained. So he did water it down. Schrader originally joined Democrats in supporting a prescription drug pricing bill called HR3. That bill would have enabled the Department of Health and Human Services to negotiate lower drug prices on at least 50 prescription drugs covered by Medicare. So already super watered down, but he turned his back on this as well. The limited number of drugs subject to negotiation already reflected a compromise with progressives in Congress who fought to raise the minimum from 30 to 50. But as provisions of the bill came up for a vote in the influential House Energy and Commerce Committee, Schrader was one of three centrist Democrats who voted against the provisions. Schrader instead proposed something even weaker. And let me just be clear, HR3 was dog crap, okay? Uh, since he loves dogs so much, I love dogs as well. Maybe I can use a terminology that he can understand here. Uh, nonsense, not even in favor of HR3, that was already watered down and incredibly weak. But that apparently was too much for his pharmaceutical company donors. And so he proposed something even weaker. Schrader instead proposed enabling Medicare to essentially negotiate only on the most expensive group of prescription drugs. Schrader, who used a family fortune largely composed of pharmaceutical profits to fund his congressional race, <laughs> was heavily criticized following the vote, which he explained by pointing to dissent in the Senate. Schrader is also one of the top recipients of pharmaceutical money in Congress, taking over $100,000 from affiliated PACs, political action committees, in each of the last three election cycles. So in this election cycle, by the way, he's already up to more than $111,000 in donations from Big Pharma and health product PACs. Yeah, I'm telling you that ad literally paid for by the big drug companies and their big money that they gave to him to sell you out. And then he does, oh, I'm fighting the big drug companies. I'm such a good guy. Look at me with the dogs. 
So look, if you see a Democratic incumbents ad, 90% of the time, it's a lie. Just whatever's in the ad, assume it's a lie and you'll be right. If you see a Republican's ad, assume it's a lie 100% of the time. So now, of course, if you listen to other media, if you listen to traditional media, they'll tell you, oh, politicians are so honorable. We need them on all of our shows. And we need their advertising dollars flowing to us to the tune of billions of dollars. That is why they are so honorable. You guys are so terrible for pointing out their actual record. He took more money from the drug companies than almost anyone else. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's the one that watered down the bills to make sure you have to pay more for your drugs. That's who Kurt Schrader is. And it is more corporate PACs kissing his ass mm -hmm. saying, oh, whatever you do, do not support his progressive candidate. Why? Because the progressive candidate would actually hold drug companies accountable, would actually lower your drug prices, and would actually fight against big money in politics. And the corporate interests hate that. That's why they're fluffing him. Uh, he actually does have a progressive uh, opponent, by the way, JamieForOregon.com. Check it out. Uh, it's uh, Jamie McLeod Skinner, JamieForOregon.com. We'll put the link down below. And honestly, we weren't even, look, uh, we try to support as many progressives as we can. There's tons of progressives in the country. We weren't gonna, we weren't paying much attention to this race until he came out with this outrageous lie of an ad. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And look, I mean, he's got tons of other things in his record uh, that don't only serve as red flags, but make it abundantly clear that he's not looking out for his constituents, he's looking out for his uh, corporate donors, and we're sick of it. We're sick of Democrats uh, basically betraying the best interests of their constituents uh, just to follow the money uh, in the quest for their political aspirations, it's gross. And there's uh, corporate packs like no labels, better jobs together that are all sending him dark money. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, by the way, is the local press in Oregon gonna cover that? No, they're gonna think, oh, that's perfectly normal. Of course you should be corrupt. Uh, how dare a progressive challenge corruption? Well, Jamie, but, but the reason why they're all funneling him this money, by the way, is because they're worried he's gonna lose the primary. So Jamie for Oregon.com.